My name is Dean Parman. You're watching TravelVids.tv. This is episode seven of the Cape Winelands vlog, the Cape Winelands meander. And today we are hanging out in the Simodium area of Pal. <music> Today I'm spending my time in a completely different area of Pal. It's called Simodium. It's gonna include gardens and crocodiles, probably more wine or beer, or some form of alcohol along the way. But I can't stand here and chat to you all day. I have got lots to see and do, so uh, join me on this episode seven of the Cape Winelands Meander. Every time I see This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Windmill Calder or Windmill Cellar. They've also got a brand new shop that just opened up, which is called the Contrai Mark. This is called um, Parscape Contrai Mark. Okay. Parscape. It's the cement domes. Okay. So this used to be cement fermentation tanks. I stood at one and yesterday. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, yeah. No. So the the, wine, the, the walls are basically wine stained. Okay. Um, so you can you can still feel the waxiness of it. Mm. In the older olden days, they they used um, like candle wax to, okay. to just line it. Sure, that's cool. So the so the cement doesn't um, doesn't influence the wine and give it gives it bad character. Basically, a store that has various small stalls inside of it from uh, different products from around the area here. They also host a market on the first Saturday of every month, a proper, proper farmer's market where you're gonna get produce from the farms around this area. And most of the people that, that sell from the farmer's market, they, mm. they come from the vicinity. Okay. So um, it's, it's people from Paul. My cappuccino is being prepared in the uh, pinotage tank here. But the number one reason why I'm here is I was told that if you need breakfast, go to Windmill, they've got the best rooster cook. I don't know what is a rooster cook? A rooster cook is basically a savory dough that gets prepared over um, coals. Oh yeah, it's like a, almost like a scone but not at all. And, uh, in the sense that you often put jam with of that? Yeah, jam or, jam or cheese. This yeah. is the breakfast version. <laughs> Excuse me while I... <laughs> Jeez, egg bacon, the works. It's really, it's like the best thing to see people mm. try it for the first time. Because mm. they, like, completely fall in love with it. You have no idea what you're missing out here. <laughs> I'm as happy as can be. And they were not wrong. I feel like I'm refreshed, ready for another day ready to get through some more wine. I'm sure that's on the cards. In fact, I know it's on the cards. We're gonna try one here. I'm not gonna go overboard early in the day. Um, we'll just have a little taste of their Shannon, which is starting to become my favorite white wine. Um, we've recently released our 2019 wine, so okay. we've got some nice fresh um, white wines and we've got some lovely... Um, You've got a good Shannon there? Good Shannon. Okay, we'll start the day with a Shannon. Shannon <laughs> I was told we had to meet you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dean. This is Barry. And Barry's been here for, for, uh, for a long time with the, with the seller. Um, and he basically heads up the, the storage. So after okay. you've, you've bought your wine um, in the tasting room, you, you pop in here. And, okay. and Barry's always here, uh, happy to help. What's the most popular wine that gets sold here? Shannon. Shannon Blanc. <laughs> so we're going to hear about the Windmill Shannon, right? Ben Will Shannon Black Yes 2019. Um, we recently won the award for the best Shannon in the um, cave area. I'm in good hands. <laughs> this one is really good. It's got a really good nose. So it's very fresh. All the grapes is um, from the surrounding area. The color is perfect. Green. It, it very, when, you, when you swirl it and you smell it, the um, what do you get on the nose? Oh, guava. 
Guava. <laughs> Straight away. Hit you in the face. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. awesome. Mmm, <laughs> that's my kind of wine. <laughs> Everything that's good is it? We need smell vision TV. <laughs> it's about time. I wish we had. <laughs> All right. Mm. Lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm staying here for the day. We when I've had a bottle of this, I'll have another wrist to cook and then I'm going to go lie down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I want to say. Yeah. With this bottle, you can have a nice wrist to cook next door and then, um, yeah. Cool, so that, that's it. You heard the suggestion. Come try the Shannon, award winning Shannon of 2019. A week old, ready to go, fresh, crisp guava. And uh, as you saw already, Carista cooked to match. So, Vinheel Salad, outside of Paul. Yeah, you're more than welcome to come and visit. Leaving yet another wine estate with a bottle of wine. I can't help myself. Got no place to be, no one's waiting for me I won't lie, I'm into you Got like a million ideas what we could do Cause I'm not gonna let you sleep Guys, I'm on my way to a boutique hotel down Simodium side This is the Klapmutz to Simodium road Along the way I had to quickly just do a stop and point out that this is where Babylon's Turin is. This is a fantastic place. They've got a lot to offer, including two restaurants, um, a hotel, uh, wine tasting, and of course, what they're almost most famous for is the beautiful gardens that they have here that are kept in the old traditional Cape Dutch style. They're still maintained. You have to come see it. I'm gonna keep going. I don't have the time to go everywhere. There's just too much to see and do in Pal. But while I'm on my way traveling, here's some B-roll of Babylon's tour. I just want you for my own. It's really easy to tell that you're the best girl I've ever known. I'm not gonna waste this. But what you wanna do now? Should we head back to my place? When you give me that smile, I think my heart's turning up the pace. I don't care about what we do. Pretty impressive place, isn't it? I had to stop here, just along the road on the way to Angala Boutique Hotel because this is a pretty spectacular place too. I, I can't describe what's going on around me. It's just like you have this view uh, over these brand new vineyards. They look like they've just been planted recently and the, the view over the entire Pal Valley down there. The, the, the clouds, the mountains, the colors, the green, the tranquility, it's just all so cool. And I'm gonna recap one thing I just said, the mountains. You, the, the, these lenses that we have just can't give you the magnitude of the, the, the sheer like sort of epicness of these big walls. What you wanna do now, should we head back to my place? Well, it would appear that I've stumbled onto another little piece of paradise in uh, the valley that is possible. Alright, now that is a first for me. I have never seen a nature pool like this. It's literally a swimming pool, but it's also like a natural pond but if you are one of those people who like don't put their toes into a natural pond because it might have something creepy crawly in it then this is the perfect place for you because you can see it's clean it's crystal clear This is so beautiful. There's just something about the finishes, the layout, the style of paradise. What's your name? Serene. Serene, and where are we? What's this place called? Uh, Angala, boutique hotel. Okay. And we're going to room one. Apparently her favorite room. Yes. And we were in room what now? The room four. And you said there's a river cottage room as well? Yes. Well, I can show you there. 
Let's see it all. <laughs> it's beautiful there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll say it again. It's a piece of paradise. I'm from Paul. Yeah. And uh, if you don't know the nice spots, you know, um, then you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. And you wouldn't go. Well, that's, so, that's the point. I don't know. So uh, I'm going everywhere I can. Stuff, and I would yeah. never have known about this place. Yeah, and look how beautiful it is. Fantastic. And you are? I'm Runel. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a family business. We are Fanglastic. We make this handmade functional glassware. The emphasis on handmade. So nothing here is perfect, but... Um, That's what's perfect. That, 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 that <laughs> makes it perfect. It's a hobby that became a business. Met the family and we're going to now uh, go through the process. It's an ordinary window glass called float glass mm -hmm. and what we do is we use the processes of fusing and slumping. But we get big sheets and on this table we, we cut it to the size of the plates we want to make. This contraption is a spray booth where we use an a, a airbrush to get a basis, you know, so we actually create a white canvas. And then, then it, you know, the, it, we start with the white canvas, we scratch out the design. If you make a mistake, how, how do you... will have to improvise to... to, to to, to get hide one it. Shot. <laughs> yeah, you actually, with, with this specific uh, design, you get one shot. And then we just spray it blue again. We fire it up to about 800 degrees Celsius, and it will take about 12 hours to cool down. And then okay. you will have a flat piece of glass with the paint in between the two layers. Oh. Um, and that, so that is fused. And then from here, the next day, you know, cause it takes so long to cool down, it would go on the mold. And this is what it would look like. So, and then we fire it again, up to about 740 degrees Celsius. And the finished product of that square would be that. Yeah. Okay. When they say handmade, it's it's handmade. handmade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we do, which yes. is actually brilliant, is we offer workshops from about nine to uh, one, two o'clock. Um, we prepare everything and people come and they do their own designs and then we will fire it for them and a few days later they come and collect it. Close to Central Pal as well so yeah. it's easy to get here. We do commissions as well so okay. you know so people come to us with um, you know weird and wonderful ideas. Uh, my son and Robin, Willem and Robin, they I thought it would be nice to have a, 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 a glass scrabble board. Um, this is Zeus and this is Alpha. And these are two of the cheetahs from the Ashia Cheetah Sanctuary that they asked us to replicate on dishes. If you haven't seen that part of the video yet, this is the time to click on the card above and jump to that section of the Paul vlog. I'm 
on the premises of Simons Flay. Simons Flay is the place that many people know is ah the place with a big bottle of wine. This is Simons Flay. That's the red bottle of wine, the big bottle of wine. And on this premises, the reason I'm here is because I want to mix it up. I want to change all the wine for something else. Something else I am very passionate about, and that is beer. Uh, right over here, we have K. CB, uh, almost, almost got there on KCB, a taproom, a brewery. I think it's time to try a beer. Music sounding good already. I'm heading in the right direction. Ah, let's go, go. How's it been? Paul, nice to meet you. Awesome. How do you? How do you? It's full of wine. I'm done. <laughs> I need a beer in my life. <laughs> Am I in the right place? You've to the right place. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go over to the, well, American Pale Ale and then go over to our collab beers, which okay. are very fruity. The taproom opened last year, August, so it's running a, just about a year now. Right. The APA, which is our uh, Impala RX and the Kuru. Kuru. Less pungent in flavor. We focus a bit more on the multi flavors mm. and the multi bars and body. Alright. <laughs> Right, so tell me a little bit more about where I'm at, what the brand, let's start there. August 2016, so three years back, Yeah. Uh, there was two oaks, uh, Yanni and Oki, they decided, um, hey, there's a gap in the market for a really good craft beer contract brewing facility mm. in, in the Western Cape because what happened was the, the whole craft beer boom that we had yeah. way back when, like 2015, 2016, um, what happened was there was a demand but the demand couldn't be filled by each brewery because they ran out of space yeah. and that's where we came in. Okay. So the idea behind KCB was always to be a contract brewing facility. Um, four months down the line, December, um, 2016, we realized, we realized that um, it's working perfectly, the contract brand stuff. Um, but there is a need for a KCB brand as well on okay. the market. Um, and that's where the Kudu, the RX, the Impala, and the Jackal came from. And for now, we are set on our ways of having a full range of pretty good beers. 15 Rand per beer, so you can then pick and choose, mix and match whichever beers you'd like to taste. Obviously includes the lager, the vice, the APA, the jackal that you're going to taste just now. Um, and then, <laughs> good beer. So we have our collab beers. That is the Mangmosa, and that is the O is for Orange. Here are the collab beers that we were talking about earlier. IPA over here, your Hoppy Brown Ale, our Ram Start. I went on a whole beer tour and I sat right here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more about beer, come check it out. We're going to go do a quick tour around the back as well just to see the, the inner works. Our production facility itself is a 20,000 litre facility with a 500 litre. What, what, what does it do? You can hear the bottles rattling at the back there. That is where our fermenters come in. That is where we make the, the real nectar of life. Yep. Don't forget, they also have a menu. Here we go. Like a thicker chips, a 200 gram patty, some bacon. You can't be happier than that. Some smoked photo on there as well. The challenge just got elevated. Um, I'll give, give you guys the inside. So we started at um, Bon Marie. Good burger. We even said the best burger in Paul. 
And then I went to um, Bali, full time in Bali yesterday. Bali, yeah. Pretty good too, in yeah. a different way. I think they both just got challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. You know what makes a burger? It's not all the toppings, it's the meat. Hands down, it, it, you, you've got to judge the meat. Anybody can add bacon and add brie and add sauces and things, but it comes down to the meat and the bun, because that's what a burger is all about. That like soft, juicy burger meat, so. It's all about the fat. You know, if you order this on the menu, what was this? What? Oh, uh, that is a smoked coda and bacon cheeseburger. Sure. Just arrived at Le Bonheur, the crocodile reptile adventure place. Before I go in, I just want to show you what's on the field over here. The South African national bird, the blue crane. here now we have a black mamba I don't really have a fear of snakes but I'm glad there's glass between us did you get in you know that you're just a snack in this room my name's Andrew I'm the animal handler for Lebonia crocodile reptiles and adventures. It used to be a farm, we're no longer a farm. So what we do here is we do crocodile tours, which teach you about Nile crocodile, which take about half an hour. And this is the snake center. So this is where we talk about other reptiles. It's self-guided to the most. So we have 27 different snakes in the room, but those 27 snakes are very selective. So we haven't got, for instance, brown house snakes. We have got the stuff you want to see. So king cobra, for instance. There are only five Chinese banded king cobra in South Africa to our knowledge. We have one of them on display. We've got snouted cobra, mumbers, anaconda, rattlesnake, all those names that you actually know from people we've got in the room for you. On the weekends at 10 past 12, I myself will take out some of my venomous snakes. I randomly select those snakes and I do a venomous snake show. Right here behind me, that's the, the, the spot where, yeah, literally you, you get an interactive show. He's a bit of my star. He travels everywhere with me. This is Oreo. Oreo is called Oreo because his tummy vaguely resembles an Oreo McFlurry. But he is actually an African rock python. He's our largest snake in South Africa, and why I've chosen him as kind of a representative for the room is it's Africa's second longest reptile, or second largest. Nile crocodile's first, and then Oreo. So very cool, the African rock python. They've got a stunning pattern on them, and he's a baby. He is big enough to make you leave your house, but he is only now two years old. He will one day be plus minus 60 to 80 kilograms, and then he will be five meters long at least. So always keep your distance from her. Yeah. This is a snouted cobra. Hello. Come out for me. Right. So this is Chunky. Chunky is quite a fat snouted cobra. Snouted cobra is one of South Africa's larger cobra species. They get 2.8 meters high. She doesn't look like a cobra because she's very relaxed. I work with her to keep her calmer. The other cobra I take out in the show is less relaxed. But here's one. If I push her transformer button, it makes a lovely big hood for us. Oh, no, look at that. See? Oh, wow. She only does that when she's nervous, though. When she's relaxed, she's just going to look like another snake. So this is how I teach people about venomous snakes. I have a snake out. I let her explore a little bit inside the pit. Gives her some energy. Come. There we go. She'll relax down as soon as she's on something where she feels she can actually move. She's going to slither around and do her own thing. She has a neurotoxic venom, like a lot of the snakes in the room. The orange skull and crossbones means it can kill you normally the quickest. Yeah. Ne neuro. Neurotoxin. That is cytotoxin. Hema for the blood. All I know is that you don't want any one of those three. <laughs> These little Nile crocodile, they are the newest members of the park, but they've been around for 103 days already. They're growing very quickly, so you have to get through and see them before they grow too big if you want to see them when they're cute. Within the first year, they can grow up to 30 centimeters, and that can actually keep up for a few years after that. They're powering through. So the eggs they came out of are this size, and you can see the ridiculous amount they've changed. 
The eggs look a lot like a miniature ostrich egg, but the difference is that if you crack a crocodile egg open, a chicken egg is going to have white and yolk, sunny side up. Crocodile egg is all yolk, it's all yellow, everything you see. <laughs> yeah, the little crocodiles, we've got a couple. It's 273 total, I think around, it's over 200 big crocodiles. All the same species? All Nile crocodile for now. Yeah. We're going to be changing it up. We're getting, we're busy planning and setting up for alligator and for caiman to come through okay. very near future. But right now it's just Nile crocodile. And these the, are native to South Africa though. Yes, but not yeah. to this area. For sure, yeah. We've kind of, the one area you don't find crocodile, we've got them so that you can still see them. Yeah. Okay. And, and age that we know of, sort of on... 112 years old. Okay. So we say they can live 80 to 100 years, a yep. human lifespan. But the honest truth is that if a kid came up to me and said, a crocodile can live 500 years, I'm going to go, very possibly. Maybe. Very possibly, and he never stops growing. It just takes, uh, takes a lot to survive that long. <laughs> exactly. You have to get very lucky. So the heaviest cool. Nile crocodile we ever weighed was a 1,000 kilograms. Sure. Like, if you come in the summer months, we do feeding shows for you. So okay. Summer months, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you can come through and you can watch all of our coffee. For those of you in Europe, summer is the other time of the year. We're at Christmas. Yeah. We're talking Christmas time. Yeah, Christmas time. Come by Christmas time and then you can see the crocs eat. They get their Christmas presents. This is Stefan, guys. <laughs> hey, That's why you want to know Stefan. We want you to be able to check out the animals that you don't normally get to see. We want to teach you more than you can actually get to know on National Geographic while showing you them in real life. Uh, no longer a crocodile farm, but a crocodile experience nonetheless. Um, your guide, the guides are super awesome. Friendly, informative, funny. What more do you want? Come and stay, come and enjoy the reptiles, come and enjoy the scenery. Um, just perfectly spectacular. It's not easy when you fly from the tree. One of the last stops for the day. A uh, good way to end the day is with another beer. <laughs> if not, why not? This is Soul Barrel. I'm with Nick here, but I'm going to hand over to Nick. Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself and where we are. So we're at Soul Barrel Brewing. This is our little brewery here. So um, we're kind of an American style craft brewery would be kind of a good way to think about us. Um, we focus a lot on hoppy beers, um, a lot of different wild fermented barrel age kind of stuff like you see here. What I find so fascinating is the innovative way that people are using space. Like that shop earlier today was in a wine cellar, uh, an old um, cement wine cellar. If I'm not mistaken, this looks like we're in another one. So the place was built in 1906. It was called the Drakensane Cooperative Winery before. Um, and the winery um, unfortunately closed, I want to say, like in the 90s. And then they were using it as bulk wine storage after that. But then the liquor authorities told them they couldn't do that anymore. So then we came in about, we started building maybe two years ago um, and dug all this out. With the brewery and really just trying to make the most amazing beer possible and share it with um, all of our customers in the wine lines. And the key for us is the beer is um, it's always as fresh as possible. So we brew, we ferment in these tanks, we kick directly out of the tank, and then it's served fresh out of the tap. I'm from New Orleans, and yeah. so it's the soul city, if you will. Uh, which can, for us, it's all about kind of brewing with soul, like do, wow. meaning, doing something with meaning, doing something with purpose and emphasis. So that's kind of how we approach brewing. If I could only try one, which one would it be? Um, I could maybe get you the Cape Cone. So that one Sounds is 100% South African hop IPA. We're, like I said, we're very passionate about using local ingredients and really like showcasing the flavors of the region. To local beer. International local beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one really emphasizes the local hops. Uh, we blend it with a few different varieties of Fame Boss. So oh, that's wow. kind of like yeah. something that popped up today that, that's come up quite often is just how passionate people are okay, cool, about man. where they work, about their projects, about their businesses, and this is definitely no exception to that. All right. 
So, batteries are running low on all fronts. Uh, time to end this day off quickly and abruptly. I am <laughs> quite exhausted, I will not lie. Um, yesterday and today have been challenging. I have uh, missed having Darren Barker at my uh, camera side. Um, it, it's quite a nice to have uh, his his input on, on situations as well as his uh, uh, hand on filming second angle, filming drone and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I think I think what we can take away from, from the last two episodes of me being on my own is that Paul is suited to solo travelers, solo vloggers, if you will. Um, and yeah, I had an absolute jaw. I had a great time. I am gonna stay in Paul tonight. I've come back to Spice Root. Um, I'm at La Graparia. I'm gonna order a takeaway pizza, have one last beer, enjoy the sunset of the Cape Winelands, and uh, go to sleep. <laughs>